TM. Right pieces, so that, that solves that one. Hello, Paul, thank you for subscribing. I'm going to go one D4 with the idea of playing the Jabava London system, but in a very aggressive way. So I'm going to go knight to c3. This is the Jabava London system. And I'm going to consider putting my bishop on f4. This is the first stage of the Jabava London. Okay, so we're going to do that now. And this is one of the main courses that I've done for chessable. I think this is the second course I did for chessable. And now Aldo's gone for e6. So what I'm trying to remember here is... I think one of the systems I, I like, I, I, I'm going to play here, is e3 and g4 if I get a chance. Uh, I'm also just wondering if there's uh, if I can go for some crazy gambit, just to make it a little bit different, which I don't recommend you play. But e3 is obviously the normal move here. Now, I'm going to probably stick to that, but I, I'm wondering if I can go for some crazy Mora gambit, you know. But I'm going to stick with e3. This is why I give, this is all theory so far. And the simple idea of this is to bring the bishop out and bring the knight out and in some cases like i mentioned you can play for g4 now this is actually a standard mistake those of you who've brought my jabava course i think we're going to bring out another version for uh, for ginger gm this will know that this is a mistake because of knight b5 this is one of the first first uh things I, I, I teach you in, in the Jabava. The reason this is a mistake is black has to play this move here. And now I'm going to play simply c3. And the reason this is a mistake is because it's very hard for black to now move these two pieces. I'm going to go a4 to secure that one. If the knight moves, I come in here. If the rook moves, I simply take on a7. So this one knight holds up two of my opponent's pieces. The bishop here is also very strong. I could have even considered going knight d6 check, and I can do that now. Knight d6 takes, bishop takes, but then my opponent will play knight to e4. I don't think we want to allow that. So I'm just going to play normal moves. I'm going to develop my final two pieces here. And again, I'm just thinking, I'm just telling you everything I'm thinking. I'm not, when I, when I you know, one thing you've got to realise is that when grandmasters play, they're not literally from another world. They do tend to calculate better than most players because it's years of practising. They do tend to know about what ideas they should be playing in most positions. And, but they don't necessarily see a thousand moves ahead every move. They just play, I'm just telling you the way I think. And I'm thinking here, well, Knight d6 is a tactical move I can play, but after my opponent takes the knight and my bishop comes in to d6, I am stopping my opponent from castling, but my opponent can go knight e4, and the knight on e4 attacks my bishop, and my bishop will have to retreat, and I don't see a, a reason to do that, so I'm not going to try to do anything particularly clever here. Um, now, sometimes I might have to even sacrifice a pawn over here, but I'm just going to start with knight to f3. Let's just do this first because now I have idea of completing my development. I don't like doing much when I play chess until I have completed my development. So I want to get my bishop here before I try to do stuff. But the other idea I can play is put the knight on e5 because this is a very good square in London systems. And the reason this is a London system is because of this pawn formation, like the pyramid. Basically, when you get your pyramid, it's a London system. So knight to e5 is, is very tempting because it's a very good square for the knight. And this also allows my queen to come to h3. And h3 is generally the ideal square for the queen because when combined with a bishop on d3, you can really attack that square there. So knight to e5 is tempting. Now the reason I'm thinking about bishop d3 is, well, one thing that black can do is go c4, bishop c2, and then queen b6. And my opponent then will be threatening to win a pawn on b5 which is not the end of the world for me but i think this is more accurate because if you imagine if queen b6 is played trying to play c4 and win that pawn there i can always eliminate the bishop this bishop's not a very good piece that black has this is another thing when you play the london system you'll realize when you play any opening you've got to realize what are what are your good pieces what are your bad pieces what are your opponent's good pieces and what are your opponent's you know uh good pieces and bad pieces 
And the reason for that is you need to know these things when you're playing the opening because you want to you want to know what pieces you should exchange, what pieces you shouldn't exchange. So if you're playing an opening and you and you get to a position when you're out of the book, uh, books don't really teach you this, and you're wondering, hang on a minute, what 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 were my good pieces, what were my bad pieces? You should spend you know a bit of time trying to work that out. But ideally, you should know that already. And the reason this bishop is not very good is because it's trapped behind this this pawn chain here trapped behind the pawn chain okay so now aldo is going for this idea of potentially taking here and winning this pawn now because i haven't played bishop d3 aldo is not gaining a tempo now because that pawn is not winning my bishop so this is actually what i said i wanted to avoid this move because i didn't want to lose a tempo so now another idea comes to mind aldo's closed down the pawn formation and a very instructive i think move here would be b3 trying to get rid of this pawn and just this pawn's a bit annoying because it controls this square and i think now b3 is the right move to play um i'm just thinking about pawn structure i don't need to take this bishop off straight away ideally ideally i wouldn't want to swap my knight for this bishop why because which piece is better the bishop or the knight i think my knight here is better than the bishop because my knight is in the center of the board is controlling a lot of squares and that bishop his only plan is to take my knight and the thing is if it takes that knight i can open up my a file which i'm quite happy to do so i'd rather my opponent took this knight over here so what i'm thinking is now I, i'm going to play b3 because it releases my bishop on f1 my bishop wants to come to d3 still where it can start a kingside attack my bishop wants to have a way to come and you know defend the queen side and this pawn here is quite a strong pawn my opponent has so i want to remove that pawn i'm either going to win the pawn on c4 or my queen's also going to develop and my pieces are much better than aldo's pieces uh thank you for the cheer there spiritual light uh i'm not playing subs today maybe i'll try to get that in my schedule is below I might try to change that one day to play subs at some point but it won't be happening today and now if we just look at the position again another thing this has done it's if you can as a general rule if you can exchange one of your opponent's more central pawns for one of one of your more wing pawns that is a good idea and i've exchanged a more central pawn a c pawn for a b pawn so positionally that's helped me because it gives me a little bit more centralization now aldo is trying to get rid of my bishop here seems like a good plan and i'm just going to tuck this here now because if he takes it now well at least i have or will get the open h file and my general plan now is to develop my last piece i might go here to try and force that knight to capture my bishop or i might move it here d3 is the ideal square because then I can maybe start a kingside attack at some point. But I like my position. This knight is very well secured now. It's a lovely knight. My opponent's knight, and this is the one reason this is a very nice idea, knight b5. It really does cause problems for these pieces. So Aldo's fighting hard to try and complicate. And now he's forcing my knight to make a decision. Now taking here is probably now the right move to play because my knight now is not one of my best pieces aldo's found a way to kick that knight away and i don't think moving backwards helps me at all and this bishop could become good later on i mean if i get rid of the bishop i can never get rid of my knight so now i think this is the right decision to make and here he can't move this knight so you should always think what your opponent's trying to do he can't move this knight at the moment I'm just thinking where I, I want to move this bishop. Do I go to e2 or d3? The advantage of going to e2, I force him to take here. But maybe, maybe I, 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 maybe I don't want to encourage him to take here. Maybe he's going to take here and go knight c7 anyway. So maybe I just wait. I think I go bishop d3 here. Now, if he, Aldo's a very active player, if you know the way your opponent plays it's a good idea to bear that in mind with your plans and you probably know now though he's probably going to want to go e5 but he doesn't really the other thing i like about my position 
is I've got ways to improve my position. So after I do castle, let's say I just play these moves, because I have the more central pawns, I can play c4. And again, I'm exchanging a more wing pawn for a centralized pawn. That gives me positional advantages. Because if I can swap these two pawns off the board, if you imagine they're released from the board, I'm going to be left with two central pawns against one. And that's going to be very good positionally for me. So what I'm thinking of doing is just to play it very sensibly. Go bishop d3, castles, and then play c4 to get rid of this pawn here. And I want to exchange this pawn for this pawn, which will improve my position. The other thing about my opponent's position, these two pawns are useless. They can't move. My opponent's rook can't move. I'll take there. Aldo's knight can't move. The bishop hasn't got anywhere good to go. And this knight can only take my bishop. So my Aldo is lacking active plans. So I'm just going to go bishop here. And the reason for this is I'm, I'm thinking, OK, well, I could go bishop here and force him to do something with his knight. But I don't see what he's doing um, anyway. So why force him to take here? I, I don't see why I need to force that move. I might as well put my bishop on the ideal square. And this is just a little bit more active. Another thing I'm thinking of is I might switch my queen around to a king side attack. I much prefer attacking on the king side than the queen side. So for example, I could consider queen d1 now. And if he goes knight takes g3, there's even an amazing idea. Bishop takes h7 check. King takes h7, h takes g3 check. And then if he goes king g8, queen to h5. But I don't think that's going to be strong enough because I'm not even threatening anything. Even if I have my queen and rook here on open line, if I come in with check, he always goes king f7. But it's something worth considering. Another thing I could do is go queen d1. And after he takes here, I don't need to sacrifice my bishop. I can just go h takes g3. And then I'm threatening this move without sacrificing. And how does he defend that pawn? He might have to play f5. And then my queen comes in this way anyway. So... This is a very common thing you do in chess. Once you control one area of the board, and I would say that I'm controlling the queen side at this moment in time, because I have this nice grip over here. Remember, another thing that maybe I haven't talked about enough is that I'm stopping, I'm stopping, and this is very important, my opponent's ideas. I'm making sure he doesn't have any way to get active. I mean, he might try f5 here. This is the kind of move that Aldo could try, but I don't... I can even then put my bishop on e5 if he goes f5 or I can just castle. So I have two ideas here. One idea is queen d1 going okay so you remember what I said about Aldo's play? Aldo loves active play and I kind of predicted he would try something like this but I also wasn't that worried about it because now his pawn here becomes much weaker. One move I was even thinking of doing here is bishop e4 but then he goes rook d8. But the thing is, I'm not worried about this move because I don't see what his plan is. In, in some ways, I, I thought he might play this move, but I also thought it might weaken his position because of the d5 pawn. So I think now I can simply castle. I mean, I could go for tactical ideas, but I'd rather get my king out of the way first. I mean, if I go c4, he has this check. And I, I think my king now, I'm not going to checkmate him on this square. Um... Queen d1, let's just make sure, takes, check, king takes, check, king, no, it's not working. So I'm just going to play castles, very, very simple. Very, very simple. I'm doing all right. Thank you, everyone who's catch, you know, leaving your comments in the chat. I'll try to have a look at your comments when I can, but obviously quite busy explaining my thought process here about what's going on in the game, which I'm hoping you, is giving you an insight into the way that Grandmasters think and you can see, okay, so now what do we take with? Well, generally, we always take towards the center. But this move is not ridiculous because then I have some control of f5 and I open up the f file. So here, with the idea of bringing my bishop to f5, but I don't think I... It's positionally undesirable because e3 might be weak later on. And I don't think I need to play such a positionally undesirable move in this structure. So after takes here, what's he going to do? Maybe he's going to go king to that square. Then this is his, the point of his play. So maybe actually, Aldo, you know, the way he's done this is not so silly. So actually this, okay, let's have a look at f takes. And then if he goes king h8, I can go bishop to this square. 
it's quite interesting. The more I look at it, the more I think, hmm, interesting. So here, king h8. Am I going to have some chance to attack him? I think this is the more I look at e5, the more I think Aldo's made the right decision. It's almost good to go active if you can. Because he's going to try to go move this pawn to e4. Okay, so I take here. I think he has to go king h8 with the idea of going e4. Now, if I go bishop there, he goes queen here. No, he can't because then I take this pawn here. So, okay, so I want to stop him playing these two moves. So, okay, so I take king here, bishop here. He has to go queen here to defend that pawn. But his queen on this square seems a little bit funny. How do I take advantage of that? Can I take advantage of that? I'm not sure I can. Um, I could try c4, but he just takes it. So takes here, bishop f5, queen c6. And I don't know what my next move is there, because he's going to play this next. And then my, then everything starts to look a little bit funny. So this is, this is probably okay i'm gonna i can't see why you know you should always take towards the center unless there's a really good idea okay so aldo has of course gone for this plan so this is kind of getting to a critical moment because if he's able to play this move and maybe this move he's going to get some activity and I, I don't want to allow that so i'm thinking now about ideas where i break like this if i take here first and place okay but then he then he brings his knight to this square i don't want to okay so i don't want to move this pawn because i give away to c5 square that is clear so maybe i should be playing c4 let's have a look at this one when he probably has to take bishop takes and that's looking a lot better because then my bishop really comes to life i like that move this moves this c4 move the move i mentioned earlier it must be the right way to play because what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get rid of his central pawns. This is more of a positional idea. And I want to leave myself with a passed pawn. People could also say it's isolated, but because his knight is so bad, I would say this is a passed pawn. So another thing I'm trying to do is improve my minor pieces and my pawn structure. If he goes e4 here, I just drop my bishop back. I'm not worried. He can't attack me easily here. He can't attack me, he has no pieces to attack me. And it's a bit like a French defense where this pawn is holding his pawn structure together. And because I'm challenging that pawn, his pawn structure is a more of a weakness than a strength. The reason he went king h8 is because he wants to go e4. He couldn't have gone e4 before because I would have gone bishop takes e4 and this pawn would have been pinned to his king. So he wants to try to mobilize this pawn that's the reason behind the king h8 move and you can see you really when you're playing chess it's so important to try to work out what your opponent's plans are the higher level you get you see this happens more and more people don't just think of their their own ideas they get into their opponent's mind as well um hot chess academy thank you for the kind comments uh pack with porn I mean, I, I think all principles in chess, like when you talk about backwards pawns, double pawns, whatever, they're all generalizations. And any generalization in life, it's a generalization because maybe in the majority of times it's correct. But there are obviously exceptions and you have to take everything case to case. So, you know, you, you talk about a pawn, pawn weaknesses as you are there. Uh, often pawn weaknesses are going to be weak for a reason, but then you have to think about it case to case, right? You have to think, okay, uh, the pawn on the back was filed. It might, in some cases, it could be a strength. So you've got to look at things individually. Thank you for subscribing. Call hand, call hand Keith. Call, I think you're going to be call, call hand Luke. Okay, so Aldo's now trying to improve this knight, and I think it's now time to try and open up the center. And can't I just take, okay, so he wants to play a6. This is his idea. But I, okay, I'm going to take here. This must be the right move. I'm getting a little bit short of time. My knight can always come back to c3. And 
I think Aldo's position was actually quite bad after C4. Um, and the reason for that is, okay, I have to take this one back. There's no choice. And if he takes here now, I have knight to C7. So he's played here and knight C3 now looks like the most sensible move. I can also go D6, but I'm going to go knight C3. And you remember one of my ideas early on when I played B3, and this is often in chess, you'll see it's a, it's little moves, plans that come together, was to gain the center. I wanted to swap my B pawn for his C pawn, and then I wanted to swap my C pawn for his D pawn. And the reason I wanted to do this was to gain the center. And you can see here now, I've not just won a pawn, but I've gained a very strong central position. And the center is generally the most important part of the board. Hello, Jess Fox, hope you're doing all right. Did you just do a music stream, sir? I need to check out your, your music stream at some point. Go and have a look at Jess Fox's YouTube channel. Very chilled out music. So thank you for the, for the raid there. Okay, so Aldo is now trying to get some pressure against this one. So I think the next thing I need to consider here is I've got a nice position but at the moment, my rooks aren't doing anything. Where do I want to put my rooks? You should always get the best squares for your pieces. My knight is fine. It's defending that pawn. I want to go d6 eventually, but not at the moment because he has one, two attacking that square and he had one defending. So I think I want to naturally put one rook behind my passed pawn because then my passed pawn can motor. And then the other rook will probably come to c1, but in some cases it might come to b1. So we're going to go rook to okay i have to be a little bit careful he might have a tactic he might have a tactic his idea might be f5 and bishop f6 i've just noted this plan so should i be going e4 first well let's have a look so here f5 and this is where we have to use tactics rook here bishop here queen d3 and he's getting a little bit of pressure there I don't really want him playing this move. So maybe I'll play e4 first. And if he goes here, I go e5. And if he goes bishop c5, I step away. I like e4. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go e4. And the reason for that is I didn't want his bishop getting to this strong diagonal. So again, the reason I found this move is I'm thinking about what my opponent wants to do, not what I want to do. And I think... This, is, this might look quite dangerous to me, but actually his bishop there is not that dangerous, I don't think, because f2 is quite well defended. It was much more dangerous on this diagonal because I can't defend my pieces on this diagonal, all those pieces in red with any pawn. So I'm just thinking about what he wants to do, and I want to stop that. If he goes f5, I'll go e5 in this structure now. So he's going this diagonal, and now I've got to think of the best place to put my queen. I don't want to put it on a dark square because I might get pinned. So d2 would be a bad move. So I've got to put it on a light square. This has to be the right move. And also, if he ever attacks g3, remember this pawn now, if he attacks it, I can't take with my pawn. But my queen is now defending it. And the other idea I'm thinking now, okay, so he's doing this, is my knight now is not a very good piece. My knight here is, hasn't got anywhere to go. In actual fact, my knight seems to just be a target. So I'm thinking now, rather than moving my rooks, I don't think moving my rooks is that important. I wanted to move my rook before so I could push my pawn, but now I don't think moving my rooks is so important. Maybe I don't even want to move that rook because he takes there. What I'm going to do, I want to find a better square for this knight. And e6 looks like an ideal square. And often I do this. I think, okay, which is my worst piece? It's my knight. If I can move it off the board and move it on any square, where do I move it? Obviously f7, but e6 is a very good square because it's defended and it just sits there in the middle of his guts. So then I track back how I get my knight from e6 to c3 or from c3 to e6. And we can see that if I go knight here, my knight can come to f4 and then e6. So this is what I'm trying to do. Another way you can do that is trace back from e6. So you see, okay, e6, c3. I can go f4, e2, c3. So often, when you have a bit of control of the position, there's no tactics that you're scared of. Take your worst piece in that position. I'm pretty sure it was my knight because my knight is not doing anything there. And I'm just thinking, OK, if I could take it off the board, where would I put it? And you look for a square and you find that that's a nice square 
because it's defended by a pawn. He can never attack it there. It's solid, and you just trace your way around. And this is a very simple way to get the knight around. Um, my rooks, I'm thinking now, maybe they're going to come to these open files. Somewhere like this, I don't know. Well, the reason I'm not doing Magnus commentary is because uh, everyone else is. And there's loads of good people doing the Magnus commentary. You've got uh, Danny Wrench and Hammer. I like Hammer's commentary. He's very like, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, So lots of people are commentating on that match. You guys can go and, of course, watch that. But you might learn a bit more from this. I don't know. You know, Watch whatever you want. I'm not your king. You are your own king, sir. You are your own king. You can go wherever you want to in the in the Twitch world. In the Twitch world, where do you want to go? You can go there. Just go wherever you want. Oh. <laughs> okay, so now Aldo is trying to do something cheeky. Because if I move my knight to e6, he will go rook takes e6. Crafty, crafty guy. So if I go knight f4, he might go g5, knowing Aldo. My knight comes in here. He goes rook takes knight, and if I take it, he goes, yeah! Okay, so we're not going to let him do that, are we, boys and girls? So what else is he trying to do? Is he going to try to attack e4? Quite possibly. So now I think I should do something with my rooks. I don't really want to move this rook yet, because it's kind of doing a good job. So where do I want to put this rook? Do we go for the b-pawn, or do we go for his bishop? Now, if I go here, he goes queen here. Can I defend that pawn? I'm getting a little bit short of time. We do get 10 seconds of move. So that is something else. But here, here, takes, takes. And then I can take and move my knight here. But I, I don't know. I don't really want to lose this pawn without a fight. Um, I could go knight here, but then queen. Okay, knight here, queen e5. And then my knight comes into the square. That looks a little bit more like Christmas to me. So I'm now thinking knight d4 is a better way to go. Um, because my knight can stay in the middle of the board. And the one move I'm again thinking that my opponent wants to play is queen e5. And attack this pawn. But if he goes queen e5 there, my knight can then come into e6. Because he hasn't got this pin on the pawn. So I think this is the way to go. Let's do it. Let's see. So I can't go knight e6 straight away because he goes rook takes e6 and he will win a piece. But if he moves his queen away from the pin, my knight is going to slam dunk its way into e6. I'm going to put it there and screw it in the board. Have <coughs> some of that, son. Have some of that, son. Or, as they say, Have some of that, son. Have some of that, son. Did that work? I just tried to change my voice, but maybe it didn't work. I'll oh, stop. Stop doing that. I've got to put it back now, and I'm short of time. I'll get the weird. I'll get the weird. Uh, um, I don't know if that worked. Okay. I've got a voice mod going on, but it doesn't. Okay. Right. Hang on a minute. What's going on here? Okay. So he's trying to. He's trying to do a little bit of tricky malarkey here. Now, can I just go knight there as well? That's not a bad idea. He wants, he wants to eat this pawn. Knight here, get his queen to go away. But, 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 but. I feel, I feel like, okay, can always go, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a rook in the game. What are my rooks doing? Absolutely nothing, nothing. So I wanna bring my rook here, right? Do I wanna do that? Rook here, rook e8, knight f5, queen f8. It looks ugly for him, but maybe, He's okay. Maybe. I don't know. He's defending well. Now, oh, I don't know. If it's bad. Or, or do I just defend my queen? Do I put the rook on d1 so I can put my knight on e6? That might be a very nice way of playing. Do I risk it and move this, this one, making my pawn weak? I think I do. I'm going to go rook here. It looks a little bit risky because this is weak. But the idea of this move is I'm defending my queen and my knight wants to come to e6. e6. Now remember, I know I'm a bit short of time, but we do get 10 seconds added on each move. 
So it's not the end of the world. We get 10 seconds added on each move. So the reason I'm playing this is I wanted to go knight e6, but if I played it last move, he goes rook takes e6, pawn takes, and I lose my queen. In this position here, I can go knight e6. If he goes rook takes, pawn takes, he takes my queen. My queen's defended. So this is a really big move. This knight here stops a lot of his ideas. For example, rook e8, knight e6. And that just ruins the coordination in my opponent's position. My opponent's position, Aldo's position, is lacking any coordination. Um, and remember, I am a pawn up here. The reason I moved this rook here is because I want to use this rook on the B or C files. I do feel it's slightly risky because F2 is a little bit weak. But you've got to be brave when you're playing. And I don't see any reason why F2 is going to be a problem for me anyway. My king's defending it. I can always defend it with something else if I need to. So I want to keep this rook free. Okay, so now he's going for this idea. If knight e6 takes and takes, takes, he's going for that. So I, want, I think now moving this rook is correct. So what are we going to do? Are we going to go this square or this square? Which one do I prefer? One of these squares. If I go here... Knight e6 takes, takes, takes. Okay, I'm going to put my rook on b1 because I feel I have an immediate threat of taking that pawn. If that pawn moves, he loses control of c6 square. Remember, whenever you make a pawn move in chess, you weaken a square. And if he, if he loses control of that square, my knight will come into that square. But I've also seen an attractive tactic here. If he defends that pawn with rook d7... I can then go, okay, he's done this one. So can I now go here? Takes, takes, no, it's not working for the same reasons. So I've got two tempting moves. I go pawn here and I try to kill those two guys or I even move my rook back now. And now I'm attacking the bishop, forcing that bishop to move. But I'm a little bit short of time. So I, which one am I gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna move this pawn. And the reason for that is this is a very good pawn structure for me. This one pawn here, can we make it go green? Can we get a bit of green? Yeah, look at that. Look at that, I love it. This one pawn here is killing these two pawns, which is which is very nice. Because if he ever tries to move that pawn, I take on pass on. So really, this pawn is worth two pawns at the moment. And it just improves my position. And I didn't really want to allow Aldo to take that pawn. And if you're in no rush, if your opponent's not threatening anything then you may as well improve your pawn structure, improve your position. So what am I gonna do next here? Well, I think next next move, I might go rook c1 to see where Aldo's gonna place that bishop. Okay, so now he's got rid of that one, I have to take back. And the reason he's done this, he could see that my knight was gonna become very strong. But this is a really tough position for him now because the more pieces you exchange when your material down, the worse your position gets and i have this very very strong and extra um past d pawn this very strong and extra past d pawn and i can just start pushing this okay so aldo's now threatening to win this pawn now again i don't need to rush i might as well stop his plans is he going to try to go f5 next move aldo will definitely play f5 next move i know aldo he'd definitely go so f3 f5 he will play this is exactly the way he exactly the kind of thing i want to do to to try and liberate his pieces okay so what else can i do here can we start a counter attack here takes oh i'm very short of time i'm going to just play this move and if he goes f5 which he will play i know aldo he'd definitely play f5 if he doesn't play f5 i will go g4 and stop it so he definitely has to play f5 and then i take there and you know my, my king's a little bit weak i'd be a little bit careful but i think my d pawn is going to cause too many problems so f5 i take it if he takes with the queen then he's he's not blockading my pawn anymore so i'm just going to try to shove the pawn if he takes with the rook then his rook moves off the e file. So that's also probably okay for me. But if he doesn't go f5, I will go g4 and I'll get a clamp on that square. Because again, I'm trying to control what my opponent is, is aiming to do here. If you can stop your opponent's plans, you're on your way to winning. 
And that's, you know, this is the only active move I can see my opponent does, can do, Aldo. And I want to stop him doing that active move, if I can. Other things I was thinking I could try to do is just come into this square and pressurize b7. So that's another move I'm considering. I also feel like rook b6 is quite a useful move uh, where I can maybe double rooks and pressurize his. That is a, a case of a backwards pawn. So you can see here, you've got to try to work out where the targets are in your opponent's position. Now Aldo has gone for some kind of attack here. Now if I go g4, he wants to play h5. And if I take on h5, he wants to try and come in. So maybe g4 is not correct because I give myself a target. I'm going to go king f2. And this also gives me the option. If I go g4, h5, my rook can come to the h file. My king is perfectly safe here because there's no way really he can get around the back. If he could get a rook onto this file, it might be a bit more dangerous. But his rook is now on the side of the board. So if he plays rook to c8, I can probably just play rook c1. Exchanges will generally help me because any ending is going to become easier. More pieces exchanged because this pawn becomes stronger. If his queen tries to come around, well it can't. His queen can't come around the back. All of these squares are defended by my pieces. So this seems like a sensible move. Now he might try something like queen here to try and come down here. When I have two ideas, I can play f4 or g4. Now f4 is very interesting because then his rook is going to start to get embarrassed. I take control of e5 as well. So if he goes queen d6, I can go f4. I can also go g4. Maybe queen c7 is a better move. But then I go d6. And if he goes check here, I can safely, I think, go queen d2. And then he might go check here. He's only checking with the queen, so I can't be that scared. Queen e3 comes check here. And I think I can... Okay, so he's found the best move. This seemed like the best try. And now d6 is possible. I've got to move a little bit quicker now. I'm now thinking g4, because it does just kill that rook. He goes eight. Okay, now d6. D... Okay, g4. I'm going to go g4. The reason for this is if he checks me, I can move my king even to g3 or g1. Because then g3 is not on pre. Okay, so he's come with an aggressive move. And I have to be a little bit careful here, right? But now I want to play d6. And he's got this check, which he has to play. I go queen d2. And then he goes queen c. He's done, Aldo's done a very, very good job of trying to create some play here, which he has done. Um, all fairness to Aldo, he's complicated the position. And the reason I have not played this as accurately as I'd want to is because of my time situation. It's getting a little bit low. So he's going for this perpetual idea. If I come here, we'll come back, check again. And if I go rook d2, he takes my rook. I've got to go for the win. And where do I put my king now? This is slightly annoying. My king doesn't have a good square and I'm running out of time. Here takes check king here. F, okay, I'm gonna go for this one. But this is not really what I wanna be doing, okay? Because it's it, it it's certainly looking a bit scary now, actually, because he's even taking here check. What am I doing? Am I throwing this away? Maybe I'm throwing this away. Because he just takes here, right? F4, then he might even take here. I was hoping I have a check here, king here, and then rook c1, but then he takes here check. King takes f, this is, I've, my calculation has gone a little bit wrong here because I got myself short of time, so it's my own fault. So takes f4, rook takes f4. Complicated. Now I don't want it to be complicated because it, it was, should have been simple. So Aldo's done a great job of complicating. So I think he can take here. This is what I'm scared of. He can take here. And he's threatening to take there with check then, which is really annoying. But I mean, if, if I have to try to play for a win, then this is the right way. So I've definitely misplayed this. I've allowed him. I've allowed him to complicate the position when I've been short of time. This is one of the problems. You've got to make sure you always have a, enough time 
so you can just calculate a critical moment. So what am I doing after this move? Okay, now he's gone this way, which I'm very happy about. I feel that my I'm 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 quite safe here, no? Why didn't he take there? I'm, sh I'm I, of course I'm not going to take that. I'm just going to move my king and I think king h3 is safe as long as his queen can't get to this square, but he can't go queen f2 because I'm covering f2. I'm getting 10 seconds of move, so it's all right. And if he tries f5, I think I can just take no, I, I think this was a really bad move of Aldo. Maybe I was still winning if he took there, but it was really complicated. Really, really complicated. And I think he had to open up the position. I don't feel this is right. The only way, if he gets his queen to f4, I'm actually losing. But he can't get his queen in on the dark squares because my queen in the center is controlling everything. And now I can just try to queen this pawn. And I can also even come and take this one. So I think this h4, he had a bit of time. Maybe he should have used his another minute to have calculated that position through just to make sure that he's, he, he was on the right thing because it was a critical moment for Aldo there. I might have been winning somehow, but it would have required a lot of calculation. What we'll do after the game, we'll put this on the computer just to check a couple of moments in the game, just to check a moment here and there, make sure how the game was. Now I've got 26 seconds, but we get, okay, now I think he has to try a move like this. When I guess takes, he's gonna come in here. Now d7 takes, takes. Better move. I think this is okay. He takes here, check. I can even try to go king takes h4 and take this one. I've just got to remember, don't lose on time. Don't lose on time. Don't lose on time. That's always a good bit of advice. What I'm thinking is here, if he takes here, can I be really brave? Okay, so now... Oh, he wants queen here, but I've got queen d6, right? And I've got f4. This should be all right. Just got to avoid his queen. Look at his rook. His rook can now not play. This, this, this looks, this looks, uh, it looks winning. Really win. Okay, so now can I take here? Oh, no. He has check and checkmate. Oh, my words. Look at that for some cheekiness. So I'm going to go here. If I'd have taken there, he would have queen check. King takes rook. Queen h6, checkmate. His queen would have come around to this square with my king on g5 and given checkmate. But the important thing I'm doing now is just covering g3. I'm just stopping that plan from happening. And I think now I'm quite safe. I've got a lot of pawns defending. I might even grab this pawn on h4. His rook is completely out of the game and my d pawn's strong. So I'm actually now just going to grab this pawn. I don't think I need to fit. Oh, I could come here. I've got some nice choices. I'm going to come here. There's no frets, right? Uh, no, I'm going to grab this pawn. Oh, don't lose on time, Simon. God, I keep saying it and I keep spending a little bit too much time. I thought if I move here, he might come queen back. And then he's threatening this check again. And I couldn't really work that one out. So I think I get rid of that one dangerous pawn of his. That one dangerous pawn was supporting g3. And I always had to watch out for a queen coming to g3. This is, this is much safer. And the thing is, he's very tied down. He can try taking this one, but I don't believe it. I don't believe, I don't, my, my king can always come back like this. And I think he's just lost now. This is, this is just game over. This is, I'm just going to take it. I don't, he can't do anything just with one queen. And uh, yeah, it's a lost position there. Well, that was, that got very interesting at the end. I mean, I think Aldo did a fantastic job for fighting back there uh, just to make it complex. So uh, thank you for the game, Aldo. Um, Aldo, like I say, about 22, 2300 strength. So he's, he's a strong, strong player. Um, I'm going to now look at the game with the computer and see where we could have improved. Um, C Rule Sports Guy, thank you for the kind comments. I've got loads of stuff out there if you want to you know, check out my stuff. Chessable. Eh, name, name a company that I haven't worked for. I'm basically like a chess. I just throw myself about. <laughs> well, I love it. I mean, I love all the companies I've worked for. Um, okay, so we're going to have a look now. Thank you for. The, let's all thank Aldo for the game as well. Let's thank Aldo for the game. And uh, okay, the accuracy there. Um, I mean, it was an okay game. 
let's have a look. It, it reckons I was worse at one moment, which is going to be interesting to see. So I'm just going to see the critical moments. Now, this is something you should all do at home. If you're serious about getting better at chess, play a longer time limit and then analyze your games afterwards. Analyze your games afterwards. So you've got to see where you went wrong. Uh, who was it who said there's nothing wrong with making a mistake? But making the same mistake twice is pure stupidity. And that goes with chess. Analyze your games so you do not make the same mistake twice. So let's have a look there. Okay, so the opening. Um, why is it not? Let me see. Is it reports? Okay. Analysis. Let's do that. Why is it not? Okay. It's it, it, okay. Right. We'll just keep it like this. And this is the Jabava London opening. And, and this is something I've done a lot of courses on. You can buy my one on gingergm.com or you can buy the chessable one if you want to learn more about this. This is all the main line. And now this is actually a mistake. It says C5 is excellent. And one thing we've got to learn when we're analyzing, especially with computers, is realizing that computers are not the be all and end all. And this move C5 is, it's just not, it's just not a good move. Bick is saying challenge Magnus. He's in the live chess. I'd love to challenge Magnus, but I think he would just laugh in my face, Bick. What's his handle, Bick? Hello, Bick. Hope you're doing all right, mate. What's his handle? Tell me his handle and I'll give him a challenge. Let's just see if he wants to play, shall we? Come on. What's his... Uh, is it just Magnus? What is his handle? Magnus Carlson. Okay, we'll give him a challenge just for a laugh. Just for a laugh. Come on, we've got to do it. It'd be funny to get crushed by Magnus. I'm pretty sure I know what the answer will be. I'm too, I'm, I'm basically, I'm too weak for Magnus. I'm too weak for Magnus. But we give him a quick challenge just for a laugh. Magnus Carlsen. Okay, I'm pretty sure he'll tell me to sod off. Uh, he's playing, oh right, is he playing in the thing? Oh, I thought that might have ended. I thought that might have ended, by the way. Is it still going on? How's he doing? Is he winning? Maybe he's got time, maybe he's got time, Bick, to play that and beat me at the same time. Oh, he's not accepting challenges. Okay, on with the game. So even C5, Bick, stop bloody, uh, stop bloody tricking me like that. You're supposed to be a, you're supposed to be the production guy. You know, you're not supposed to be tricking streamers on chess.com. That's just cruel, man. That's just cruel, dude. Anyway, this is actually a bad move. Even though the computer says it's excellent, after knight B5, black's in a bit of trouble in my eyes. And I explained why earlier on. Knight A6, and these two pieces are looking very stupid. So... I think I've got a nice position. We're going to move forwards. The opening has gone pretty well here. I don't, the, the computer says that black is doing okay here. I disagree. I think black is actually in, in not doing that well. Uh, Aldo's playing all the right moves at the moment. He even thinks here that the computer is better. Totally, totally don't, don't agree with that. I think that my position is very good here. It reckoned H6 as a move to give black an advantage. I'm sorry. But h6 is hardly scaring scaring me. Computer says no. This is why you've got to be very careful when you analyze with computers. Computers are not right always. And they're not going to tell you the reasoning behind the ideas. You need to think for yourself or have high level instruction. Hench, what, he, 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 did I say hench? Hence, I think I'm going to go for. Hence why, you know, video courses are much better. And it's not a very deep depth. You're right. I've only put it on a very... Uh, very how do we change that let's put it on a more you know deep deeper depth can we do that uh yes we can we'll put it on that one maybe that may okay i'm not going to bother doing that now it's only a couple of moments later on i want to look at first of all c4 it says is a mistake but I, I i don't necessarily agree with that uh i think knight b4 is a mis oh it says knight b4 is good but i've got a big advantage my position is very nice here the only moment i really want to look at was later on, obviously I'm doing very well here, I'm a pawn up. And the moment later on, it seemed like I'm playing all okay moves here, this is all right. And I'm, I'm doing everything okay, so far so good. I've got a big advantage, my, my advantage is, is, you know, getting better. And now maybe I should have gone more active. This is where I started to play a little bit funny. Had I, I, I did think about this move, but I couldn't analyze it with the time I had. I was worried that he'd go rook takes e4 and be able to get some counterplay. But this move I'm not sure about because my king is a little bit weaker. He now plays this. Interesting idea. 
And maybe I'm always okay here. Maybe I'm just getting worried for no reason. No reason. Let's have a look. So G4, I'm still winning. D6, it still says I'm doing really well, but okay. And now it says I should put my king on F1. Okay, this is still winning. And here, a big mistake, H4. What if he takes here? This was the key, this was the key move. This was the move I was trying to work out. Yeah, the computer is clearly on too low a depth here. And now I wanted to play f4. And I was most worried about this move now, in actual fact. Which the computer is saying is a big blunder. Because of the very calm queen d3. And here I just want to swap off queens. And if I can do that, my D pawn will advance. It looks like my king is in a lot of danger. But these are the kind of positions you need to be very... When you're playing chess, you need to show no fear. And you really need to have confidence on calculation. This is why they say, at the end of the day, it is basically it's tactics. Chess is tactics. If you can calculate well, you'll be a great player. And this is the kind of position where if you can calculate, you're not in trouble then you can play in what looks like a dangerous way but works out well. So probably I am winning most of the way. And after h4, well, I think it's now game over. There's nothing my opponent can do. And the rest of the game is, is quite easy as long as I avoid any of his tricks. And uh, yeah, it's completely lost here. So I think probably quite a, quite a decent game um, after all. The Jabava London system. Um, and one thing I know from this is this is one of the most common tricks in the opening and the common trick is if they go c5 too early if they play this move too early knight b5 gives white a very good position in my opinion now if you compare this to the normal london system let's just have a look at a couple more moves this position here i've got a normal london system position but rather ha than having this knight here on the passive d2 square which is normally where you have it in the London system, my knight is on a much more aggressive square, stopping my opponent and putting my opponent's pieces on bad squares. For example, the normal London system, and we should always compare positions. Let's say that the same kind of thing occurred. The normal kind of London system is like this, right? But look at my knight. My knight is much worse placed here because it doesn't really have potential. And the other thing about this position is that black can put the knight on a much better square. In the game, my opponent's knight on a6 was a bad piece for a long, long time. A long, long time. And in this position, he's got a much better version than what happened in the game. Um, as Anna has also mentioned, yeah, there are some tricks in this that black can fall into. I've won a number of games after bishop f4 with c5 here. And you have to be a little bit careful because if you play knight b5 without playing e3, it's a mistake because queen a5 check. And now you have to move your knight back because your knight is not defended by the bishop. So what you have to play here is you have to go e3 first. And then if black plays knight c6, which some international masters have even played against me, knight b5 is winning, as Anna has pointed out because now this move is pretty unstoppable. If queen a5 check, I can now go c3 because my knight is defended. But I talk all about this in the courses that I, I, I've done. You can go and look at those courses. I've even done, if you, if you don't want to pay any money, I've done some free videos on YouTube about this as well. And the only way to stop knight c7 is e5, but you simply win a very nice pawn and you can win this pawn. One trick that I've played quite often is they played e5, I've taken here, they've done something like knight h5, and now I've even taken this pawn now. And this is, I'm now two pawns up, and the point being, if queen takes queen, you've got this check, and you can win this one, and, and of course you're two pawns up, completely winning. So there we go. Well, I'm back again tomorrow, but I'm not gonna be, um, I'm not gonna be um, broadcasting from my own channel tomorrow. I'm broadcasting from the chess.com channel and I'm going to be covering I'm going to be covering um, tomorrow the title Tuesday event which is normally really good fun so you can go and check that out I'm going to leave you now I uh, hope you all have a good night or good day wherever you are 
but I'll be back again. I'm streaming every day this week. So if you want to catch some more of my streams and make sure you pop along and, and we're trying to help you improve as a chess player. And one of the days we'll have a little bit of fun. Uh, so I hope that helped you. I hope that gave you some little bits of advice to become a better player. Um, and yeah, um, let's just see. I'm going to just leave you one little thing. We're going to do a little raid as well. But before we go and do a raid, um, oh, oh, come on. Okay, just, just stay with me, people. Stay with me. We're, We're going to do, do one, one more thing. thing. This, this is working. working. I don't know if this is working, working but we're going to have a little bit, of, little bit of fun. Hello, everyone. We are now going over to Fiona. We are going over to Fiona. Yeah, yeah. Have some fun. Enjoy your night. Bye.